Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing great. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Sai, software engineer at Remitly. In most of the system design interviews, we might end up, you know, uh, solving questions about design, uh, messaging platforms, either it could be WhatsApp or uh, even Telegram. But during those interviews, uh, we might be super comfortable in sketching out schema and how, you know, the messages would flow from the UI to your backend. But personally, uh, I feel uh, there has been missing pieces on understanding about uh, how can we actually, uh, you know, like link between the user sending a message and uh, when the receiver is somewhere in a different continent, how does WhatsApp interact? And another example could be systems like Telegram will let you to deliver messages in chat thread or in a group chat around like 200,000 people. So how that, how that specific, you know, scaling aspect between servers would happen. So that's what uh, we are going to discuss and let's get started. Consider the simple example. Let's say we have just two users within the system and these two users are within the same region or the same continent. Let's assume. Then first of all, when user A opens his WhatsApp or Telegram, he would be connecting to the server. Over here, the basic concept, we would be using WebSockets just because the messaging is a two-way communication. So you would be sending a message and you would be receiving a response. Since a simple HTTPS would be super expensive, we will be picking WebSockets. So it will leave a long open connection. During the connection, when the user A connects to the server, the server will record the information to the caching. Why? Because in future, if user A sends a message to user B, now the server should know where the user B is located, right? And the most cheapest way for us to look that can actually scale is some cache, we can go for Redis, which is highly scalable. So you can imagine this user A dumps this information into the cache. Let's dig deeper what exactly this information is. It will tell, hey, for user A, we have this list of connections, and this is a socket ID. In a web socket, it would create a socket, meaning it creates a connection, and it stores the socket ID, which server address, what is the device, at what time, and I can talk about this, you know, the last heartbeat later, but for now, you can imagine these are the details that would get stored into the cache. And now when user A sends a message to user B, this server can look into the cache and it could say, hey, your user B is located on this specific server. And this server can immediately dump message to the other server. Two questions to answer over here. What exactly is this heartbeat? And uh, one other question is, uh, you know, like why do we need the connection array instead of, you know, directly displaying this? First with the heartbeat, imagine, if uh, the server A, if it dies, right? And in that case, there is no way that we can clean this cache. There is no one to clean this cache. So uh, if this dies abruptly, then we can have an async worker or probably instead of last heartbeat, this could be a time to live. So you can imagine if your server is having 100 users, there would be 100 connections and each connection can have a timer and it can update this heartbeat or it could act as a time to live. If it is a time to live, the Redis can clean, Redis can clean this up. So that's, that's the use of last heartbeat. And second, you know, why do we have connections array? Imagine user A is connected to his web, his mobile, and probably on his iPad, we need to maintain you know, each of these connections and we need to deliver messages to each of these connections. So to the same user A, we can add all of these things and each server address and probably the server can also know based on the socket ID and it can deliver message to that specific user. Uh, let's change uh, the environment. Now what happens when the users are not in the same region? They got spread out. You know, this is the most use case where you're texting to your friends in US, you're being in India, or vice versa. Uh, so now the system will act a little different. So uh, user A, you know, he connects to the server and the server rises to, writes to the cache, that's in India region. And uh, user B connects to the server and it writes to the cache in US region. 
uh, assuming they are both in these locations and you can actually see the content i haven't changed anything within the content we still have probably i just removed the connections array so just remove the multiple devices and you have one device let's assume so you have this con connected it and uh, probably you have last time uh, last heartbeat or time to live uh, and probably uh, I, I merge this you can merge this it could be either time to live or last heartbeat and we'll tell the region now the biggest blocker over here when user a sends the message the server should know where the user b is located but this cache doesn't have this information right so to solve this problem the way the system acts is that you have this global cache so the global cache uh, which has a lot of resources and it might be in one region and probably there could be one global cache so the difference between the local cache and the global cache is that the local cache can be updated with this heartbeat because it would take probably 0.1 to two milliseconds if it's in that region and this might take like 10 to 30 milliseconds uh, based on the traffic and uh, even imagine like you have probably uh, 10,000 connections per machine and you have like 50 uh, you know assume 50 different machines so it's around like 25 million messages uh, that's flooding to cache so even that scale would be super high so probably the flow is that the user connects to the server which writes to the local cache and it would also write to the global cache and same with the other server. But now the question, hey, uh, if there is a connection drop from the server, it can update both local and global. But what happens if the server dies, right? If the server dies, uh, locally, there is this time to live and that can handle it. But the data would be stale over here. So we are going to take a trade off over here. So let's walk through that use case scenario. Let's, let's imagine the server, the server died right and a user b imagine once the server died and he uh, like she didn't even connect it to any other server so the local would be updated but the global stays stale so then user a tries to send message to user b he checks in the local no we don't, we don't have the thing and then it goes to the global and probably it says hey you have it in this server but there is no server existence so this server will try to reach back to the server it's not existing so either it can leave it's not end of the world or this server can sort of update the cache uh, so um, you can take any route you can have a sync reconciliation server uh, that checks uh, probably reconciliation worker that checks the cache activity or this cache this server can update the global cache that this connection is no more existing and it can delete it so it's not super expensive thing and uh, yeah that's the thing so user reaches to the server server checks within the local then it goes to the global and uh, if if uh, the server breaks probably if one server breaks probably other server would be updating it or we can have reconciliation worker to probably clean the cache so we have seen a couple of use cases where user you know users are in the same region users that got spread out now uh, i just want to talk about one last use case what happens you have a huge chat thread so for example if you take uh, systems like systems like telegram you can join into a channel and the channel can have up to 200000 people within the channel so now uh, let's dig into this use case and see how this might impact so imagine you are a user within this huge channel now you send a single message now technically the server has to find out all the people within that specific channel and uh, it has to fan out so if you want to do it in a brute force way for you have to send all 200,000 users from your ui or probably there could be a cache uh, which stores relationship between chat id and user id i'm just I'm just throwing out the thoughts and the server now will somehow know who are all the users that should receive and probably look into its cache look into the global cache and then fan out 200,000 messages individually which is realistically impossible and uh, and this has to be done for a lot of channels with such huge scale and telegrams handles it uh, and now for this sort of systems there is one solution that works at scale that's nothing but our pubsub so let's chat about this so imagine just forget about the system imagine you you are a user right and you open your telegram app so immediately when you open your telegram app you will send a websocket connection and you will connect to this server 
then after that uh, this happens without you noticing it but the first thing that you see as soon as soon as you open your whatsapp or your telegram is your home timeline so technically for your home timeline you have to send a http get request right so technically not with this web socket you will send a generic http get request to a server that will pull the information from your database and probably once you have that information you would probably cache that information you would say hey for this specific channel id we have these many members and the the type is group and uh, it's large so probably you could define any group beyond 1500 or 2000 users or at least 5000 users or to be like the larger group based on however uh, the backend systems would be configuring it and once you get this so now what your surface could do is now it knows hey out of 50 threads that I have loaded, we might have 30 channels that are huge. So the server, since the WebSocket is already established, it will send a request on behalf of these 30 channels. And the server will hash out, you know, uh, each of the channel ID, and it would subscribe to PubSub. So you could imagine PubSub as probably this, I'm just picturing it out. So if this is your PubSub, you have a bunch of sections in your PubSub and probably the sort of uh, server will be subscribing itself to each of the individual topic. And now this happens in India region. Similarly, the entire flow, let me pin down. So this entire flow that you're seeing on the screen also happens in the US region. Now, here is the magic. Let's say uh, if this user on India and this user in US are part of the same channel. Now imagine this user has sent a message and while sending a message, uh, I already told you that we are going to cache this information. So the server would know, hey, uh, it, it can talk to this cache. It, it could know whether this specific channel is large enough or not. And we are not giving that privilege to the client because client can, so we, we, we would never trust, trust client, right? So this server can now look at the cache. It knows, okay, this is big enough and it would, it would dump the message to that specific topic, right? Because it got registered. Now, all the users within this topic will be, you know, will be triggered with this message. But here is the catch, right? So this user is not in this region. So then how this, you know, this user would be triggered. What PubSub does is it does this replication. So whenever there is a subscriber that's been created over here, so what it does is it replicates it to the other sorts of regions then uh, probably whenever you have a message immediately to the topic if uh, if there is another server that's been subscribed they would be receiving it or these messages would be replicated to other regions and now uh, you know this topic for the same channel will be getting a message and since this user has been added to subscribed, the server has been subscribed to that topic, the topic triggers a message to the server and the server sends it back to the user. So long story short, uh, you the user client would be getting the sort of initial channels and it would send to the WebSocket connection and the WebSocket connection would be sort of, uh, you know, connecting or subscribing to the partition. And sub PubSub is more like you get the message within the bucket and the PubSub will sort of fan out to even to 200,000 people with ease within that topic. We have uh, gone through three different use cases that, that would work best, starting from simple one-on-one uh, -on -one use case in one region, scaled it out to multi-region and scaled it out to having tons of channels. So probably uh, these three could be the core entities that you would be using your system design interviews besides scaling it. And uh, I think this is super helpful. Uh, and if you really like the comment, sorry, like the content, um, please like it, share with your friends and revisit. And I'm more than happy to make more similar content. Please comment if you need any other topics. I would love to take it. And thanks for watching. That's it for today. See you again.